Well, it has been a landmark year for forest fires, and some are warning it could get worse in years to come. Right now, large forest fires are burning out of control in northern Ontario. We've been bringing you some of that news this week. But that is not the only province that's been affected. We know that wildfires are burning right across B.C., covering Vancouver in a haze. We saw some of this last summer as well. Joining us this morning is Merit Turetsky. She's a scientist at the University of Guelph and an expert on forest fires. Good to have you with us this morning. Thank you. You know, our coverage this week has been about fires in, in Ontario burning out of control. Also uh, in B.C., we saw severe cases there last year. Right now, we know 831 wildfires in Ontario so far this year. When we look back and compared it to last year, there were only 511 in the past 10 years. So why the increase? It's a great question. Um, and first, I want to express my, my sympathies and my condolences to everyone who's been affected by these fires, all the homeowners who have been forced to evacuate or are on call, the business owners, um, and in, most importantly, the very brave men and women who have been deployed across Canada and internationally to help us fight these fires. So um, the we know that fires are important. Um, Ontario, in fact, depends, our forests depend on fire. So fire is an important part of the boreal forest. And about every 20 years, Ontario experiences a pretty large fire year. Um, we were not due to have a large fire year this year. So that huge heat wave that Brandon has been talking about um, that affected most of the globe uh, this year has really caused the fire system in many regions around the world to go out of whack. And that is affecting us right here at home. Go ahead. Um, you know, I think it's really important um, to, to think about all of these things as being connected. So we know that fires are a natural part of our boreal uh, forest system. And yet the signs are really clear. The science is very clear. Fires are now burning larger mm -hmm. than ever before. They're getting more intense than they have been in the past. And this is a direct outcome of climate change. It's a direct outcome of some of the extreme drought events that we're seeing in the record. And this is only projected to get worse. Uh, you know, when we bring in experts to talk about flooding, or we talked about the extreme changes in our winter temperatures, uh, everybody says the same thing. This is attributed to climate change. The secondary conversation to that is then changes in infrastructure. So then how do we adapt if these extremes are the new normal? And in flooding, you know, the advice is stop building on floodplains. What would be the advice for forest fires? Yeah, and that is the perspective we need to have. We now need to be shifting into climate adaptation. Of course, you know, as Canadians, um, as global citizens, we need to do everything we can to curb emissions so that we can keep climate change uh, under that two degree centigrade warming threshold that the global consensus has reached. Um, but beyond that, um, you know, even if we stopped emissions today, we would still have climate change. Mm -hmm. We would still have fires increasing on the landscape. So we need to be invoking fire smart practices. Mm -hmm. Every homeowner needs to understand that fire can affect them. We need to be clearing brush from our yards. We need to be thinking about where we build into the future. As we move out across the landscape and build more into forested areas, we're going to have increasing interactions between fire and people. We saw some of that. It's in, inevitable. Yeah, we saw that in Fort McMurray. Uh, trees not growing back in this area. So we've got larger areas of, of forests that are being burned. What about regrowth? How do we repopulate our forests? Right. So right now our immediate concern is keeping people safe, keeping our corridors open so we can, uh, you know, move goods and services and people around. Those are the immediate consequences of fire. But fire has many long-term consequences for how ecosystems function. And you just um, touched on one of the important issues that we're really training our eyes on in terms of collecting scientific data. We know that uh, in some areas where fires are burning really intensely, trees can't grow back. They don't have the proper substrate and nutrients in the soil anymore to recover. And so we've been tracking this in the Northwest Territories fires, and we're seeing that large areas of land there simply are not regrowing vegetation. And what does that mean for us? Well, it means barren land for a long time. Eventually, those ecosystems will recover, but on much longer time frames than what we've seen in the past. So this can trigger landslides, soil erosion. This is going to affect farming. It's going to affect a lot of different aspects of living here in Ontario that I don't think we've necessarily associated with wildfire in the past. So the burning is just the first step. We're going to continue to see uh, outcomes from it. Thanks so much for being here this morning, Mary. Thank you.